Okay, let's say we have a function like this function right here, and you're asked to find the inverse of this function, okay? What do we do to solve this type of problem? Well, I'm gonna give you the exact three steps that you need to take in order to find the inverse function of a function. Now, before we get going, I wanna tell you that this uh, whole um, concept of function, this topic of functions in mathematics and algebra is huge. You need to know a lot about functions, and what we're talking about here is a very little small fraction of what you need to know. So we're gonna keep it very uh, focused and specific on finding the inverse function. But let me mention a couple things here. Every function does not have an inverse function. So just because you have a function, not every uh, single one of those functions is going to have an inverse. So why is that? Well, I'll mention that a little bit before we kind of get going, but um, you're gonna need to know more about what I'm gonna cover in this video. Again, again, I'm just gonna go over the steps on how you solve. If a function has an inverse, how do we find it? That's what we're gonna be uh, that's what we're going to be focusing on mainly in this particular video. But I do want to kind of remind you that you need to continue to broaden your knowledge about functions, okay, especially functions and inverse functions and different type of functions, range, domain, uh, the different terminology and concept of function. So I'll give you some uh, suggestions about how you can do that in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you are having a tough time in mathematics, I can help you out. I've been teaching math for decades. And one of the things I do is I really focus on explaining math in a way that anyone and everyone can like. Nobody wants to be taught like a, uh, you know, reading a textbook. People want to learn, you know, by easy explanations that, uh, you know, are clear and understandable. And that's my style of instruction. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, definitely check out my math help program if you're having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you happen to be preparing for a test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace, or CLEP exam, or maybe, or maybe a teacher certification exam, I can definitely help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, we were just recently voted number one for middle and high school mathematics in homeschooling, so definitely check out my homeschool math courses. And if you don't have any math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But uh, if you really want to do well in math, you have to learn how to take outstanding notes. Okay, so let's get into functions and inverse functions. So uh, real quick here, I'm just curious, how many of you know what the HLT and the VLT uh, are? Okay, these are tests that you, um, you learn. Uh, when you're talking about functions, okay? So I'm just curious, put your answer into the comment section if you've heard of the HLT and the VLT. I'm gonna uh, talk about this right now, then we're gonna get into actually we saw how uh, we saw for the inverse function. So the HLT, okay, well actually, let me start with the VLT. The VLT is something called the vertical line test, okay? So that means this, so if I have, let's say, a graph and I can draw a vertical line and it, uh, that vertical line, a vertical line will only chop through that graph one time, okay? A perfectly vertical line. And it only crosses the graph one time. That graph represents a function. So let's talk about, so like right here, this would be a function. This is a graph of a line. This represents a function. If I have something like this, and can I draw a vertical line through it? It's chopping through it two times, okay? So this would not be a function, okay? That graph would not represent a function. So like a circle, okay, if I draw a vertical line through a circle, guess what? It's going through that circle uh, more than uh, one time. So this fails the VLT, indicating that, that the equation of a circle is not a function. It's what we call a relation, okay? So that's the, uh, the VLT. Now, the HLT is, you probably guessed it, something called the horizontal line test, okay? The horizontal line test. So let's uh, take a look at something like this. Here's a parabola. So if I asked you, is a, a graph of a parabola, a quadratic equation, for example, is this a function? You just draw a vertical line through it. It chops through the vertical line just one time, or a vertical line chops through the graph just uh, once. Uh, so yes, it would pass the VLT, so this parabola does represent a function, okay? Now, let's take this concept of the HLT. So let's draw a horizontal line now through this function. So what do we have here? Well, it's passing through the graph two times, all right? So this fails, 
all right? So a parabola, you can have, uh, again, uh, something that is a function, it passes the VLT, but it's not gonna pass the HLT. So the HLT is a test that indicates uh, whether that function, okay, in fact, has an inverse function. So a graph has to pass both the VLT to be a function and the HLT in order to have an inverse function. So let's talk about like a line, okay? So an equation of a line, does that pass the, uh, H, uh, the vertical line test? Yes. And does it pass the horizontal line test? It does as well. Okay, remember, uh, a horizontal line can only chop through that graph one time. So um, that's how you know whether a function, a graphical test, whether a function um, has an inverse. Okay, again, you can have a function, but when you're when you're looking for an inverse, it may not you may not have an inverse function. So I wanted to kind of get that out there, uh, being that we are talking about inverse functions. So here in this particular um, problem, this does have an, uh, an inverse function. This function here has an inverse, and now we're going to talk about exactly how we find that. Okay. All right. So let's get into it. So basically, there's three steps, right? And I'll give you an opportunity to solve this in a second, uh, then I'm gonna go through and solve it. So the first thing is we need to know that if we have this notation, this function notation f of x, the f of x is equal to y, okay? So in other words, I have f of x is equal to two x plus one. This is a, a what we call a linear function, or I could write it this way, y equals two x plus one. Again, f of x, is the same thing as y. You need to understand that, okay? So I'm gonna re replace the f of x with a y. That's the first step. The second thing is you're gonna replace your x variable with y and the y with the x, okay? So wherever there's an x, you're gonna put in the y, and wherever there's a y, you're gonna switch uh, that for x. You're gonna switch uh, x and y, okay? And after you've done that, you're gonna then solve for y, okay? That, and when you do that, you will have found the inverse function, which is this notation right here, okay? All right, so here is the problem. You can already see I already did step one for you. I uh, changed out this f of x for y. So what you want to do is uh, switch the y and the x, okay, and then solve for y. So go ahead and see if you could do that. If you uh, do this successfully, you will have found the inverse function. Okay, so I'm going to get into it now. So if you want to work on this, go ahead and pause the video, but I'm going to show you the solution right now. Okay, so step number one is we're going to um, recognize that f of x is the same thing as y. So I'm going to change out the f of x to y. Okay, so now I have y equals 2x plus 1. So this is step one. Okay, now step two is I'm going to replace the x and y. So here I see an x, I'm going to plug in a y right there, and here is y, I'm going to plug in an x. So I'm literally just swapping uh, x for y, okay, and y for x. So right down there, that becomes an x, and right down here, this becomes a y, all right? Now step number three is we're going to solve for y, okay? So let's go ahead and do that now. So here, I have x is equal to 2y plus 1. Let me go back up here. This is after we switch things out. So x is equal to 2y plus 1. I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to rewrite this as uh, 2y plus 1 is equal to x. Okay, so the left is equal to the right, and the right is equal to the left. All I did is just move this over to this side of the equation and this over to this side. It doesn't break anything because I know I'm going to be solving for y. I just want to have that variable on the left-hand side. So I have uh, 2y plus one is equal to x. Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve for y. So what's the first thing I need to do? Well, the first thing I need to do is subtract one from both sides of the equation. That leaves me with two y is equal to x minus one. And to get y by itself now, I need to just divide everything by two. Okay, so right here, we can have uh, y is equal to x minus one over two. So this is the answer. Okay, so that's one form of the answer. But I can also break this up into two fractions, x minus one. I can write that as uh, one half, right? Because this is really a one from that x. One half x minus one half. You see here, if I was to um, um, add these fractions or subtract these fractions, I would end up with this as my answer because they still have the same uh, denominator. So you need to recognize that this form is the same thing as this form right there. So both are correct. And um, if you gave this to your teacher, they would be, you know, uh, happy with your answer. But also, 
it's good to uh, be able to know uh, to write your answer in this form as well. Okay, but we're not quite done. We did solve for y. So this is our inverse function. So remember, we started off with this function, okay? And we ended up with this function right here being our inverse. So let's use that inverse notation. So that would be like f of negative 1, this notation right there. That means the inverse function of this function right there. And this is our answer, okay? So uh, if you wrote this again, okay, or this version, uh, both are equally correct. But that is an example of how we find the inverse function of a function that, in fact, has an inverse. So let's go back and review the steps here real quick. So the first thing is you're going to replace the f of x for y, okay? And then you're going to switch x and y, and then you're going to solve for y. Now, one thing that I'm... Um, not getting into in this particular video, just because I don't want to make it any longer than it already is, is how we verify a uh, function and its inverse. So you need to know that if you do a composite function, so f of f of negative one, okay, we plug in, if we plug in the inverse function into the function, or we plug in the function into the inverse function, you're going to end up with x, okay? This is the definition of a function and its inverse. So again, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, not getting into uh, even more things that we need to know about the relationship between functions and inverses. So a couple of recommendations. One, I teach this super thoroughly in all my algebra courses, okay? Like my algebra one course, algebra two course, wherever you might be at, college algebra. Uh, so if you really, really wanna master this stuff, that would be my first recommendation. And two, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel that go into this stuff. But you can see, you know, we're, we're talking about functions and function inverses. There's quite a bit to know, okay? But again, we specifically we're focusing in on uh, this particular video, just the steps to find the inverse, and here they are right here. Something you want uh, might want to put into your notes if you don't already have, uh, have notes with this in them, okay? All right, if you got all this right, then I must go ahead and give you a good old 1982 Mohawk haircut, all right? So yes, we actually thought that was pretty cool way back in the good old days. Um, I'm glad I never wore that haircut, but you know what? I was always impressed with people that did. So A plus 1982. So it's impressive. If you knew how to do this stuff, that means, you know, you got a strong uh, math teacher, you're taking notes, or maybe you've been watching a lot of my YouTube videos. Whatever the case is, I'm glad that you know something about functions. But if this video helps you out in some way, then go ahead and consider helping me out by smashing that like button and uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my content, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.